Completing a physical exam of our patient gives us information about their body. It is a way that we can find the injuries that are going on in a person's body or physical findings of certain types of illnesses. When we perform a physical exam, we might do an isolated section of a person's body in the instance like of a hurt wrist, or if I've got any mystery or confusion about what's going on for the person, I might do an entire physical exam to find all the injuries or all the, the findings that could be happening in their body. I'm gonna demonstrate an entire physical exam. And again, you can utilize individual components of this, or you can use the whole thing to do the most detailed assessment possible. In most situations, we should start our physical exam at the patient's head and systematically work our way down their body. So in this situation, I'm gonna start up at the head. And I'm gonna be careful as I move around my patient not to be kicking branches or any other stuff onto them. I'm gonna make sure that I'm not stepping on them or kneeling on that patient. And as I come up towards the head, I'm gonna start feeling the, the skull. I'm gonna verbalize what I'm doing to the patient so that they understand what I'm touching. And I'm gonna feel the skull for any injured spots. I'm gonna feel behind the head, feel around the eyes. You open and close your jaw. You feel like you have all the teeth you're supposed to have? I do. Okay. I'm gonna look at the ears and behind the ears for any fluid or any bruising. Any pain in your jaw? No. I'm gonna look at the patient's neck and see if their trachea is in the center of their neck or if there's any veins bulging out. Then I'm gonna move down the body. And I find it's easiest to do a physical exam where I can see the patient's face so I can see subtle wincing or response to any touch that's happening. As I move down the body, I'm gonna come down towards the shoulders. And for myself, I'm gonna feel the clavicles first. I'm going to find both clavicles or collarbones and feel them at the same time. And then I'm going to assess the shoulders. And with just a firm squeeze, I'm able to identify whether there's pain or deformity in each shoulder. Any pain there? No. For myself, then, I go down the arms. And I'm going to work each arm individually, and then I'm going to go back to the torso. For the arms, I'm just gonna chunk check down the arms. And I can check range of motion if I'm concerned about there being any range of motion issues. Can you reach the other arm over? Allow your patient to help with the assessment as you're moving through it. They can move their arms for you rather than you needing to reach across if they're able to do that. After I've assessed the arms, I wanna make sure that blood's getting out to the fingertips. I wanna make sure that they have sensation in their fingertips, and I wanna make sure that they have motor control. That's oftentimes referred to as circulation, sensation, and movement, or CSM. So looking at both hands individually, I'm gonna to check to make sure that blood's returning to the fingertips when I squeeze blood out of the fingertips. So I've pushed down and I've seen that blood comes back within about a second. So that's circulation. I'm gonna make sure that sensation is effective. So which finger am I touching? My pinky. Which finger now? My thumb. Okay. Which finger? My pinky. On which hand? My right hand. And how about now? Uh, my pointer finger, also on my right hand. So I'm checking inside and outside of the hand, pinky side, thumb side and I'm checking both hands. And that lets me know that there's messages getting passed from my touch back to the patient's brain. I also wanna make sure that there's no movement issues. Can you squeeze my fingers? I'm gonna have the patient squeeze both hands at the same time so I can identify differences in the grip. After I've completed the arms, I'm gonna then check the torso and starting with the rib cage. I'm gonna put firm pressure on the patient's ribs. Can you breathe in? Okay. Any pain? No. How about here? No. To see if there's any pain in the patient's ribs. You'll notice that I went way up into the armpits to find the upper ribs and then lower into the lower ribs. The next thing I'm gonna assess is the abdomen. And I'm gonna check four sections of the stomach for any findings. I should find a stomach that I can press into without any discomfort. If I find rigid things, if I find distended sections of body, or if I find significant pain in one of the sections, I'm gonna note that on my, on my documentation form. 
Using the patient's belly button or navel as a landmark, I'm going to try to identify the left and the right side of that patient's body. So using the patient's left and patient's right, I can identify anything left of the navel as being patient's left, and anything right of the navel being the patient's right. And then I'm also going to have sections of the stomach that are above or below the navel. So using those two terms, left and right, and upper and lower, I can identify the four quadrants of the stomach, or the sections that I have around the navel. So I'm touching the left upper right now, and I'm going to push in and try to identify if there's any findings. Found nothing there. You'll notice that I'm putting pretty firm pressure and really trying to palpate down towards organs. After assessing the patient's abdomen, I'm gonna then check their pelvis. With the pelvis, I'm gonna find the, the crests of the pelvis or those hip bones that we think of, and I'm gonna put firm pressure inwards on the pelvis to see if there's any pain or discomfort or any crunching. After assessing the pelvis, I'm going to move down the remainder of the body. If there's concern about a genital injury, I can ask the patient if they are, have experienced any genital injuries or if there's any concerns. Otherwise, I can keep moving forward. I'm going to assess the legs very similar to the way that I assessed the arms. I'm going to move down the legs in a big chunk check. Any pains there? No. And after I've assessed the legs down to the feet, I'm going to check the feet for circulation, sensation, and motion, or those CSMs again. For circulation, I'm going to check either pulses. I can check capillary refill on the toes, like I did with the hands. Or I can reach down into the person's shoe and identify warmth. But for the sake of having no known injuries in the ankles or feet right now, I'm going to just feel both feet for warmth. This one's warm. Also warm. Then I'm going to check for sensation. Which toe am I touching? Uh, the big toe. Okay. How about now? A uh, little toe. On which foot? My right foot. When assessing sensation, identify big toe and little toe, but don't try to use middle toes because people have a really hard time identifying the difference of those toes. So check the patient's right foot. What toe is this? My big toe. And which foot? My left foot. And how about now? Uh, little toe, left foot. Now I'm going to check motion. Can you pull up on my hands? Okay, push down. I've got circulation, sensation, and motion down at the feet. The last thing I'm going to assess in the physical exam is the patient's back. If I'm not worried about them having a spinal cord injury, I'm going to have the patient sit up for me. Can you sit up? Completing the assessment of the spine, I'm going to find the base of the skull, and then I'm going to feel or palpate each one of the vertebrae down the person's back. In the neck, I'm not going to actually be able to feel the vertebrae, but I'm going to feel in the center of their neck where they would be. And then once I find that first big vertebrae, I'm going to then find each vertebrae on the way down. When I get to the tailbone, I'm going to push on the tailbone and then I'm going to feel the kidney areas or what are called flanks on a person. Any pains? No. 